Hello again everyone, my name is Marcus and I review stuff. Today I'm reviewing the album We Are Not Your Kind by Slipknot. Um, full disclosure, I actually already really um, recorded a review for this album, but <clears throat> literally right after recording the album I listened to it again and I realized that the, that my original review on it was maybe inaccurate or that I had literally just changed my mind after hearing it just that one more time. Um, and so, one, I'm going to really think about the way that I review albums on this channel. Um, with songs, I like the reaction format or at least to just, you know, if it's a song I've heard once or twice, a review format where, you know, I literally just listen to it and I give my first impression because it's one song it's kind of easier to analyze on the spot but with albums I, I don't like that one listen and give you a review type thing I want to be able to kind of sit with it do a little bit of research look up you know the lyrics see what went into the writing process the instrumentation process all that stuff I really like to do my research when it comes to the album and I like to listen to it multiple times to really get a feel with it. So when I started my last review on this album, I had said that I had a little bit of time to kind of sit on it. Uh, I recorded it just a few days before I'm recording this one, uh, where it had almost been a week since the album had come out. Now it's been over a week since the album's come out, and I've had a few more chances to listen to it some more. And I realized that, that uh, the original kind of rating and ranking I gave it was maybe uh, not didn't do it justice and so uh, after listening to it again and actually a few more times now I want to go ahead and give it another shot at, at this review so uh, I'm gonna start as I always do just like with I do when I do with songs I'm gonna review the lyrical content the um, instrumentation throughout and then the listenability while also talking about kind of the artist's inspiration and um, the process of creating the album. So, uh, We Are Not Your Kind is a, it, to me, it's a good Slipknot album. It is, a, and it's just a good album in general. Um, the reason it, it took me, I, th I think I really had to sit with this one and listen to it over and over again, just because it is kind of, to me, it feels like a long album. Uh, it feels like uh, there's a lot of songs on there. And a lot of the songs are just very dense, and I just feel like I had to really sit with it and listen to it some more times. So, anyway, let's go ahead and get into the lyrics of, I guess, the album at large. Um, lyrically, I liked a lot of the album. There were a lot of really standout lines for me. I'm all fucked up, and I make it look good is, like, one that everyone's, like, talking about. It's a great line. But also, um, lines from songs like The Orphan. Or uh, there's a line from another song that's like, um, if uh, if we know this is hell, then why would we believe in heaven? Something like that. Like uh, lines like that. I think Corey Taylor is an excellent songwriter. You know, from his work in Slipknot and in um, his other band. Uh, I I know the other band, but it's, I'm blanking on it right now. I'll come back to it. But it, with his work in in his bands, he I feel like the lyrics are always very strong, and this was no exception from the start of the album to the finish it's really telling a story and and I, and I think uh, the lyrics are very strong um, which for some songs leads to some really nice catchiness uh, with the lyrics uh, specifically so um, I, I just really think his, his his writing is on point Stone Sour his other band by the way <laughs> had to stop and think about that for a second um, but yeah I, I think Corey Taylor is an excellent um, lyricist, and you know, if he had help from others, I mean, they did a great job. I think uh, lyrically, this is a very intense album. I think when you listen to the lyrics, it, it, it's well. W when I talk about the songwriting, um, a lot of the songwriting was inspired by personal tra tragedies and recent events. Um, Corey Taylor and his wife apparently split, and which of course is, is gonna you know hurt anyone. Um, and so it was really just um, taking that anger and that pain. For, from what I remember reading, it was also just a super toxic relationship. So taking that anger and that pain, not only from that toxic relationship, but then moving on to the divorce, I think you hear a lot of that in, in the album. And it's, it's raw, it's, it's dark, 
But if you're into that, man, lyrically it is fantastic. And, and like I said, um, even if you're not into that, I think Corey Taylor is an excellent writer. He's he's got a lot of of great things to say in his lyrics. Uh, by great, I mean like just intense, powerful, um, or interesting. So lyrically, I give it two thumbs up. I thought it was fantastic. I, the lyrics really got me thinking, and kind of like. Uh, smiling in some cases, um, even songs that I wasn't big on, I was still like, okay, there are, uh, there's a line or two, or maybe the chorus is really catchy with the way that that uh, the lyrics are in the chorus, and so you know, I, I think um, the lyrics help carry even some songs. Where uh, whereas when I talk about instrumentation, maybe not as much. I think instrumentally, <clears throat> so like I said, lyrically, two thumbs up. Instrumentally, I think there are peaks and valleys. Um, it's a heavy album, which I really, really like. I mean, it's an ab- album that I can jam out to. Um, but there's not quite, there's not quite, um, enough differentiation. And I think that's also another reason why, why it took me so long to review this album is that some of the songs to me kind of bleed together instrumentally because it's just hard, heavy guitars, drums, bass, whatever, right? But you know, there's not a whole lot of guitar solos, which I'm fine with. I mean, I, I love guitar solos, don't get me wrong, but I'm fine with. There's not really, to me, that many memorable, like, guitar hooks, guitar riffs um, that I can really sink my teeth into. It's hard and heavy, which, again, I really like, but <clears throat> it's lacking in some songs. Um, uh, kind of something a little bit more interesting or a little bit more differentiated. With that being said, there are some songs that really take big risks instrumentally and uh, or even vocally. I, I usually lump vocals in with instruments. So I can't forget the vocals, but I'll get there. Uh, there are songs that take um, risks instrumentally, vocally, that pay off. Um, a notable one is the song Spiders. Um, first of all, I love Corey on that on that. Um, on that song, it really, like, I, I don't quite uh, have the chorus memorized, but, like, just the imagery of, like, the spiders and stuff, I'm like, he, the way he sings it and kind of brings it to life is really nice. Um, but then instrumentally, they, they go with this piano that, that really sounds like like a John Carpenter horror movie. And in interviews, they, they've said as much, that that's kind of where they drew inspiration from. And so it really shows, and that totally could have come off as cheesy or... Or, or, you know, just kind of inauthentic. But it, to me, it came off really well. Especially the fact that other songs elsewhere in the album have sort of this horror movie vibe with what they're able to do instrumental, instrumentally, lyrically, and vocally. And so, whereas I said that maybe some songs don't quite have something memorable to hang on to, I think that's made up for with the fact that there are songs on this album that take risks and do things a little bit differently. I mean, hell, they've talked about how unsainted that that chorus that they had in there, you know, kind of draws back to um, the Rolling Stones is you can't always get what you want. They, they've even said that's kind of another place they drew inspiration from. But that's a huge risk. They talked about how they weren't even really sure if they wanted that chorus. Would it be cheesy? Would it seem just weird, you know? But it ended up paying off in the long run. So I do think that they took uh, some really interesting risks with a few of these songs that really paid off. At the same time, instrumentally, it still sounds like a Slipknot album. You have, you know, you have your your DJ scratches and you get some piano. You got, you know, you got someone hitting a keg with a baseball bat, right? So it's like, it's what you expect from Slipknot. And so, with that being said, I still give it, I still give the instrumentation a big thumbs up. Maybe not two thumbs up, but I still give it a big thumbs up. Because I, I think, despite some of the kind of monotony sameness, there are parts of this album that really shine instrumentally. Before I finish my one thumbs up, I have to mention the vocals. Corey is brutal on these. There's not a whole lot of singing from him. I mean, he sings on certain songs, and when he does, it's fantastic. Um, but he does more yelling than anything, honestly. Like, this is a heavy album. Um, even as far as, like, modern metal goes. I mean, I listen to uh, In Flames' is, um, Eye the Mask, and to me, there's almost as much singing as there is screaming on that album. This album, however, is pretty much all screaming. So if you're into that, hey, 
this is a great album for you vocally. Uh, but Corey Taylor's there. He said apparently he's, I don't know this, he hasn't, he's been sober from alcohol for like, I don't know, almost a decade or something like that, and has been, um, hasn't been smoking for, you know, a few years now, and apparently that's helped his voice out a whole lot. But of course he's aging, his voice is aging. But man, he sounds, he still sounds great on this album vocally. Um, I'm just looking at the list of songs. I love what he did on Unsainted. I love what they did with Nero Forte. Really, uh, both instrumentally and vocally, that song really brought me back to like um, almost new metal, but like a new new metal. You know, because you listen to new metal in 2019 from, you know, back in the late 90s, early 2000s. It kind of sounds dated. It kind of sounds cheesy, right? But I feel like when I was listening to that song, Nero Forte, it was sort of like, it's like, um, it what it, it did feel like new metal, but refreshing and like good in 2019. Like it, it felt like this is pretty awesome. So I really love that they kind of put those elements in there. There's another song that they do it on um, in this album, but I can't quite recall the exact one at the moment. But um, so you know what? Just for Corey Taylor, I, just because I think he's so strong in this album, I'm gonna give the instrumentation slash vo- vocals a th- one thumbs up. And like uh, like uh, almost half thumbs up, like it almost gets two thumbs up, right? I, I think, uh, again, with, even though it's missing a few of those interesting parts, I think it's still solid in that respect. Now, the last thing I have to talk about is listenability. And I, and I really felt like, even in my last review, I felt like I had to really split listenability up into two parts. If you are a casual rock, hard rock, metal fan... This is probably not the album for you. I'll say right now. I would say the one radio-friendly song, single-friendly song, is Unsainted. You know, if you want something that's going to repl- sound great on radio, if you want something that's going to, you know, fit right into just about any rock or metal playlist, Unsainted is the song, right? But to me, that's the one song. Every other song, I think, has its own life and has its own value but to the casual listener, I don't think the casual listener is really going to appreciate this album. So listenability suffers a little bit for that, I guess. But if you are a fan of metal or a fan of Slipknot and you like heavy music, you like dark lyrics and dark vocals and dark subject matter, if you like you know, your band to take a little bit of risks, uh, if, you know, if, you, if you like Slipknot, this is a great album. If you like heavy metal this is a great album um and it's very there are some songs that like to again to an average listener eh, maybe not but to someone who really likes metal there are songs in here that are just super on point super catchy that have already made my playlist i mean like to me the standouts on this song are on this album of course are unsainted uh nero forte as i mentioned and Spiders, simply for the risks that they took. I might even put Critical Darling up there, too. I really liked Critical Darling. Um, those are, to me, the standouts. But there's other great songs on this album, like Orphan. Uh, a Liar's Funeral is really interesting with what they do, kind of with the with the dark subject matter. But I, I like the chant, like, burn, 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 the liar. Like, that. that that's awesome. Uh, Birth of the Cruel, I, I, I kind of liked. Uh, on my channel, you know, I, I, when I reviewed it on my channel a while back, I originally said, eh, you know, not, not feeling it quite, but after listening to it a couple of times, I'm like, all right, you know, it, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, so, other songs I didn't mention that I think are still worth the listen, so way for Earth, My Pain, uh, Not Long for This World is probably one of my least favorite off the album, um, but I, I honestly think, and, and this, is, this goes back to why I felt like I had to make another video and rank this album higher was that I really like just about every song on this album. The only three that I skip are Insert Coin, Death Because of Death, and What's Next. And simply because those three are really transition songs, they take you from one song to the next, they're only like a minute long, right? They're just transition songs, right? Um, so that's, that's the only reason. But every actual song on this album I, I either loved, enjoyed, or eh, kind of liked. So I would say... That's one big reason why I, I pulled it up to, to a higher ranking. So overall, I'm giving it a uh, listenability. I'm giving it for the casual listener. Eh. Again, if you're a casual listener, I don't think you're going to enjoy this album very much. But if you like metal, you like Slipknot, you like stuff like this, I'm giving it two thumbs up for listenability. This is a great album. 
Um, so overall, you know, I felt like I really had to rank this higher after giving it some some time. Um, and so let me check my list real quick. I'll tell you where it is. Um, I think it's uh, number three for the year, 2019. Am I correct? List? Yes, I am. Yes, I am correct. Yeah, I put it number three right behind Living Mirage by the Head and the Heart. Um, I originally had put it at number five, but again, I had listened to it a, a couple more times and I, and I really enjoy it, so had to put it up there. And then overall, it's a little bit lower overall, but still a respectable spot. It's number 21 overall for me of all time. Now, this is not a complete list. I mean, this, is, this does not include every single album I've ever heard in my life. But um, on my working list of albums that I love all time, it's number 21. So I, I think that's pretty respectable. That's almost top 20 albums all time. Um, and so really check this album out if you haven't already, especially if you're a fan of metal or Slipknot or whatever. Um, go check it out. I think it's a great album. Um, I think people will enjoy it. And honestly, I think I remember seeing that it was on its way to reaching uh, number one. So that's pretty great. Um, anyway. If you want to support them, want to support Slipknot, go check out the album. Listen to their music on official channels and pages and whatever else. Uh, if you want to support me, you know, likes always help. Subscribe, whatever. I don't, I don't really care. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's nice, but, you know, I, I do this for fun. So if you want to support me, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I'm Marcus. I just reviewed some stuff, and I'm out. See you guys next time.